Hello, hi, hi everybody. Welcome to my channel and this is Venus Visions. In today's video, we're going to be speaking about the full card. We're going to be jumping right into the video, just like the full is jumping right into wherever it is that he's going. So if you are interested in learning more about different esoteric knowledge, specifically the divine feminine energies, the divine feminine entities, goddesses, and things of that nature, please do subscribe. Um, so yeah, today is going to be a very interesting video because the Fool is actually the very first card from the tarot deck. It has a lot of meanings um, specifically pertaining us humans and our soul journey. And if you heard anything about the tarot, they usually call it the Fool's Journey. This is a very important uh, card, very important hidden meanings behind it, and very important archetype that we all all of us humans may become at one point or another of our lifetime. So the tarot deck originated from different ancient places, but over time we've seen the arts of it and the, some of the meanings kind of change. But this one that I have right here, so briefly, just to give a brief um, overview of the arts work and stuff like that, the image, the art depicted on this is from the original uh, 78th deck and I personally believe that this is the most important card of the deck because they represent the whole deck itself it represents basically a human's journey and specifically into you know spirituality and just diving deep into you know the mysteries or learning the mysteries of this world and first we see that the card itself it represents a feminine kind of energy where um, you know he's dressed really nicely he's going into the leap of faith. So what does this card really really represent from an esoteric point of view? And as you can see, he's just walking with his little dog. To me, the dog is seen as very happy. Some people can see the dog and depict it as trying to warn the fool. I think over time when we see a later on artwork cut that came out of the fool, specifically from Europe, we see it as kind of like a, a, a fool, if you will. And The terminology, the fool as we know it today, I think is very derogatory regarding this this kind of um, energy, and I'll explain why. Because actually, this is the most important one. Because without being the fool, we wouldn't have all the other cards, and we wouldn't have the master, the master. Yeah. So to become your own self master, self actualizer, evolved human in this realm you first have to be the fool. So just from a surface kind of perspective, the fool represents Aries in the zodiac signs. It represents newness. It represents taking a leap of faith. It represents just, uh, you know, dreaming and going out there and going on to your adventures. The fool can uh, represent many things. Uh, it doesn't matter which level you are uh, esoterically or which spiritual level you are. And even if you're not on a quote-unquote self-realized spiritual path if you're just here living your daily human life the fool can also meet you there where it can represent um you know people going on their journeys just deciding to travel people wanting to get up and just move just take that leap of faith basically whatever you need to take a leap of faith that's where it can meet you but on a deeper esoteric level it represents the soul's journey so if you see him he looks very happy he looks very He's very unaware of the dangers. And this has, I, I've been thinking about this a lot because, because before making this video, I was just meditating on this card. I even have a little color book. I'll show you guys. I also got this from, you know, I love Amazon. I love coloring. You see, I try to make it look like this fool a little bit. I'm not done, but see, I try to make the colors. I try to make the colors kind of similar a little bit, but I love coloring. I love these adult color books, but I found this one, which is really cool. I, it was really cheap, too. Again, I love Amazon, and it's about it's the tarot coloring book. And 
I think it's very special because when you're coloring, you're, uh, um, you start to get into that meditative state anyways. And so when you're connecting with the cards, even just looking at the cards themselves, or you can even print it out and color it when you're in that meditative state, you start to tap into that archetype that within you of the fool of this energy, what it truly means within you. And you start to naturally get information and other, uh, other inquiries about it. And so when I was meditating about it, there were so many things that came up from money wise. So you can think of this energy from the biggest investors, right? So the reason why we call them the biggest investors is because they are often successful. And what they often usually do is they do take that leap of faith where they do invest or they make huge investments. And oftentimes that those investments um, pay out for them. And so in that moment of them signing out or, or taking that leap of faith in this investment, they are being the fool. And so this is why I tell you that the definition of the term fool, as we know it today, is very misleading. And so just taking that leap of faith, um, it represents a very innocent, innocent, childlike energy, very pure hearted. The fool is holding a white rose a white flower which represents purity and so they are on their journey for self-discovery and this can also represent you know self-discovery learning about yourself so like i said earlier in this video you can't be the master without being the fool he's very trusting he has faith and this is why he's not seeing that there is a cliff under him and a lot of people point out when i was researching this card too to see what other people have to say a lot of people were pointing out the dangers he doesn't know the dangers what's ahead but during meditation what I found out what I was told is that the fool doesn't fear these things and the fool doesn't see these things and what you don't fear can't possibly touch you we don't know if the fool is going to jump off the cliff and there's dangers and he dies I mean we do know that it's not true because Otherwise, we wouldn't have this whole tarot journey, right? This whole artwork and everything that comes after it. And so we like to think us looking from the outside in, we see the dangers. But if he doesn't see the dangers, then are they really dangerous? <laughs> Does that make any sense? If we see the dangers... But the person living the journey does not see them. That means they don't fear them. That means they can't possibly touch them. And so what you don't fear cannot touch you. And this doesn't mean that you have to be oblivious to what's going on. You can be very aware of things that are negative and dark entities or dangers of the world. But when you don't truly fear those, it doesn't touch you. And, I, and I've seen this happen so much. Like this is so true in everybody's life. This is kind of like a law. And I've seen this in when I watch these documentaries like on Netflix, for example, and a lot of crime shows where you see people who are some of the worst criminals, too. They can also be the fool. Uh, some of the worst criminals, they don't really fear some of them that don't fear, I guess, jail or don't feel getting in trouble and stuff like that. They end up actually not dealing with those things. They end up going free or just things just kind of work out for them. And I'm talking about the top, top level. And I always wonder, like, why is that? And it's because... Again, they don't have that fear. So the fool doesn't have a fear of the journey ahead. Of course, we know later on through the, the you know, self-discovery journey, he has to go through death, which is a self or a death of the old self. And this is true when you're going through a spiritual awakening journey. And it's in this moment that you decide to go with blind faith and take that leap of faith that everything else meets you, the knowledge meets you, the whatever awakening that needs to happen, it meets you. But the only thing that you have to do in this journey is to take that leap of faith. And it's very hard for us, especially in the beginning, especially when you're just quote unquote awakening, it's very hard to just, you know, have that leap of faith because you feel like a fool. You might feel like you're crazy. You might feel like, well, I don't know. I just feel like this is the right path. I just know it's the right path, but I don't have anything physically to prove it to me. And in the beginning of your spiritual journey is in order to see those um, evidences manifested later on, you first have to have blind faith and just know like 
it's there and I trust it and I'm going to go with the trust. And so once you trust, once you are open to that, once you are like, and he's, he's open, if you see the arms, he's open holding a beautiful flower that represents purity, a pure heart. So as long as the fool has, why did the camera just flip? That's weird. Who has that pure heart then he's always protected. I always see the dog too as like a spiritual animal or a guide or somebody that's protecting them and see how he's excited. The tail is all the way up. This is why I said in the beginning, a lot of people will say the dog will. Some people um, see this as a dog trying to warn him. Again, like I said, if the fool doesn't see the dangers, then they're not really dangerous. They're in, there's nothing the dog is warning him about. In fact, the dog is in his moments with the fool and pure joy look at the tail all the way up to me he's smiling um he has this little bag of tricks some people depict this a card with the trickster archetype i don't agree with that i don't think that's the same thing um he is holding a bag and i think that bag is just things that you carry on from again when you're going through the spiritual journey the bag can be things such as blocks or illusions that we learned along the way or things that we inherited that are kind of with us and eventually he's gonna have to get rid of those bags in order for him to become lighter to be reborn again but it's okay even the fool in the card is seen i mean it's very hidden deep esoteric knowledge that is embedded in in the tarot embedded in these stories and it's beautiful because there's no words right it's just besides the the title we're given it over time i'm not sure if we decided to give it this title but if you just look at the image that's what it represents um so going on that soul journey diving deep and it's so interesting again because last night i was thinking about the card again just trying to um meditate and see what wants to come through and right before I slept I put on a audiobook and I, I often do this where I go on YouTube or wherever and I find a different esoteric audiobooks. I think this was by Earl Nightingale. I think so. I'll try to post it but it's so so interesting and it has nothing to do with the the title and the name had nothing to do with the fool but then just listening to it I was like, this is exactly the journey that I was just, this is the fool's journey in a funny way. And where he explained, he was giving out the different, in the book, he was telling the different percentages of people in this world that make a difference. So there's about 95, there's the 95% and then there's the 5%. The 5% are usually those brilliant, creative people that um, make a huge difference in our you know, life as a collective, as a human, and oftentimes what makes them different is their thought process. And one thing about them is they are individuals. They like to go their own path, if you will, whereas the 95, they follow a group of people. And then the, the 5%, they usually don't do that. They usually go in their own self-discovery. And I think that's so beautiful because that's literally the full story. The fool we see is by himself besides the dog. This is why I think it represents a spirit animal or some sort. And the dog is white. And it's, it's the, the, he is part of the 5% that make a difference. And Another thing they spoke about, and I was like going to sleep, and then I can hear things um, as I was there was enough to sleep. Another thing they spoke about is how the difference of their wealth. I mean, usually that five percent will end up becoming very successful, and I mean very, 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 very wealthy. And one thing they knew, the most important thing that they knew that a person can do to get to that successful point is um, their thought process. And so how they thought about success is. 5% see it as it's about what you know. It's about your knowledge. Whereas the 95%, some of them will say it's about who you know. And this is giving away your own power. So the fool is going on his own journey to knowledge, to wisdom, to gain wisdom. Because, I, I mean, yes, what who you know is important in terms of like being successful in this world. Like say you want to be wealthy or whatever the case might be some people will say oh it's about who you know your connections and that's important but what's even trump more trump than that and the reason why i use the word trump is because in the cards they are what they called the major arcanas or the trump cards in the word trump uh the definition for the word trump just means something that's above something else and so the fool in the tarot is actually a trump card and they see themselves as 
So the, the thinking of that 5%, he said, they see as knowledge as the most important thing. So if you have knowledge, you're going to know, okay, I'm going to need to build connections. I'm going to need to know that's part of it. I'm going to need to have more self-discovery and just they like to learn as much as possible about everything as possible, especially if it's a specific niche of something they're looking to be successful. And even if they're not realizing they're doing this consciously. So this represents the fool in all its aspects is somebody who is open, who is trusting, who has faith in the knowledge. And they because they are so open and so innocent hearted like that child, they are able to be protected and they're able to be, you know, given that that knowledge because the sun here, it also represents um, sunlight, carries a lot of information, a lot of knowledge, a lot of hidden information for humans in general. And the sun is just bright, beaming, shining, like, ah, you made the decision. And so just jumping in and just making that choice, just going and, and making the leap of faith is the most important thing. And again, today, this morning, as I was getting ready, I was watching, I was watching another video, listening to another podcast of some um, beautiful esoteric women that I follow on YouTube. And they were talking about how the most important thing you can, you can do in this world is to find out about your own self, to go on your own self exploring a journey, just to take that leap of faith of, okay, I want to explore this. And the more you just having that intention is just going to elevate your life so much more. But the more you try to learn about, um, that your soul, your journey here, and just the whole human experience, the spiritual experience, the more rewarded you are going to be. And again, it's not going to be easy <laughs> later on. I mean, especially in the beginning when you're first just being equipped with these tools, you're going to have to face them in a real world kind of way because this is the best way for us humans to learn is by experiencing things and but I'm I, I'm not we're not we're not there yet right now we're just in the beginning the beginning one and this is card zero because zero is the, the perfect circle is a lot of potential going on I keep getting closer to make sure my face is focused because last time it was not focused yeah, the fool is dressed in very lavish clothing and he's so happy, represents joy. Usually in a spread, um, you can read this as something very positive, something very enlightening. It's um, encouraging, like go for it. And like I said earlier, also represents Aries in the uh, zodiac sign. It represents the first one in, you know, our, our, our zodiac astrological um, charts as we know them today they have Aries as the first one personally I don't think that should be the the way it should be but it's just the way it is right now it's depicted as the first um, zodiac sign of is Aries but the tarot deck actually reflects that whereas the first sign is the fool like it represents Aries it represents that laughter that joy lavish just not knowing having complete faith and some people can also depict this card in a negative way. Um, later on, well, like I said earlier, later on, we saw arts of this card being depicted as um, somebody who's poor, somebody who's regretful, and they hold a stick, and they're literally seen as, like, hitting people with that stick. And these were the stories that were given at that time, too, of the archetype. And what it means is I feel like this is definitely the wrong depiction of it, and this was done in a way to try to make people run away from the information, run away from self-discovery, run away from having faith, because um, this artwork, what it ultimately tells them, what it translates to is that if you go on this self-discovery, if you have faith, you're going to regret it, you're going to be seen as sad. And then they're seen, the, the fool is seen as like sometimes sad, very poor, very like untrusting of people. And it's just not true at all and we can see that in the dark aspects where you're being gullible if you will or trusting you think that you are being uh, you're trusting people and so they do things that you translate as them hurting you but in reality is as long as your intention was pure and as long as your heart was you know white like the the flower that he's holding then reality 
you were not never hurt by these people and whatever was done was going to be done for your benefit ultimately even if it looks bad in the moment even if it's hard for us to understand that was part of your path to make you up to that next person so there's nothing anyone that can do they can that can trick you or um yeah as long as you are that that a pure hearted innocent like and there's nothing anyone I can do to harm you and I've noticed that a lot in my life where I would trust people and I would trust friends and then they would do things and I didn't even realize it till years like after the friendship ended I'm like oh my god you tried to trick me here and this that and it's so funny because I would notice their frustration over time and I'm like why are they frustrated meanwhile the whole time they thought they you know they saw me and they're like oh this is a gullible dumb person and we'll be able to use her and do this this and that and then break her down but over time especially if you're a very spiritual spiritual way of person somebody who's happy like the fool others who are not on that high cliff will try to pull you down with them and it's funny because you see that card later on in the deck and then I'm, I'm gonna try to go over a couple of cards in other videos cards that i'm interested in and people see that as they try to, again, they try to pull that person down and you can't pull the fool down because the fool doesn't see you as a danger and the fool doesn't fear you. And because they don't fear you, you, there's nothing you can do to possibly hurt them. And so they try to trick you and you notice over time they just get frustrated and they might have one up over you. But like I said, it's not really true. That was meant for your own progress. Whatever happened was meant to teach you your own lesson to get you up to that next level. And they're really just fooling themselves, if you if you will, if you want to play on the words. Yeah, the most important journey spiritual in this in this whole spiritual journey is being the fool, whether you want to be the high priestess, which holds a book of secretive knowledge or you want to be the temperance, which is a master manifester that takes different elements of the word of this earth and changes them into something else. Or you want to be the queen and king of pentacles, which is very successful, very rich um, people. <laughs> then the journey must start with being that innocent, pure-hearted person that trusts trust has complete faith in the divine has complete faith in their protection and they will always be protected because they have that ultimate complete faith and they take that leap of faith into the next step into self-discovery into soul discovery into whatever it is that you want to do whatever knowledge that you want to do or even like i said earlier investments be the fool, be that pure-hearted, innocent person that only sees the bright lights and the fun of the journey ahead. The fool doesn't see the death, the pain <laughs> of when they have to let go of that bag, right? Because that's the death of the old or things like that, which is necessary again. And they don't, they don't see it in that moment. And that's the beautiful moment about it is when you truly become that fool, that's when everything changes. It's so funny because he's standing on a cliff and I guess the back is mountains, but for some reason, for the longest time, I always saw it as like ocean water. And yesterday I was watching a video of somebody else said the same thing. He's like, oh, there's water. And how I used to see it was I used to just look at him. I'm like, well, people are like, oh, he's about to fall and drown or whatever. And I'm like, well, how do we know that the waves aren't gonna pick him up? How do we know that... And he's looking up. How do we know if there isn't something up there that's over there, you know, protecting him? How do we know if he didn't just stop to smell the air while he's on his way up the mountain and got to a really beautiful cliff and just stopped to smell the air and enjoy it? And of course, this is just such a positive, happy card that it represents all those things. And because he is in that blissful, pure moment, he's going to be rewarded for it. The fool here is seen as dressed up to the nines he is decked up and usually this card is actually supposed to be a feminine card and, and if you look at it it is given a feminine energy even though it's a male right it is still a feminine energy very colorful feminine in the movement feminine in the just trusting to trust is a feminine act it's the act of trusting of letting go of knowing that you know what I know things are beautiful. I know there's a lot of beauty out there for me. I know things are supposed to work out for me. And in this moment, I'm just going to decide. And I trust and I have complete faith. 
and I'm just going to go and see these beautiful things. I know these things are there for me and I trust myself and because I trust myself, knowing that those things are there for me is a valid knowing, is a valid knowledge because I trust whatever I know. I trust my dip, deeper knowing. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Um, and I'm ready to see the beauty that's out there that I feel and know that exists that I am worthy of. I am worthy of this enlightenment if that's what you are looking for. I'm worthy of this success if that's what you're looking for. I am worthy of starting. And it represents just that start, fiery, very passionate energy. Again, Aries represents fire, passionate, and just passionate about life, passionate about the knowledge, passionate about the experience, whatever it is that you're going to. Like I said, this card and this hidden meaning can meet you anywhere, can meet you regardless of which part of your life you're at, even if you are just, um, and when the deck ends, when it finishes, when he's done with his journey, he becomes a fool again to start his next journey and then on and on and on and on and on. But this is the most important part is just taking that leap of faith. I have another one right here. It looks a little bit different. But they're still the same. But I keep looking at it to see if there's any other information that I want to speak about. But I'm just letting it flow through me. And, but yeah, this is what the fool represents on a deeper level. And so next time somebody tells you you're being foolish, you're being a fool, um, celebrate yourself because you are on the right path. You are on a journey. And the fool knows that there's no such thing as mistakes. And there's no such thing as dangers because the fool has no fear only knows that there's going to be lessons and things to get you higher and higher and higher so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope it made sense to you if you have any other suggestions or any videos you would like to see please let them down below like i said i want to go over other um the other cards such as the empress the high priestess the, the very divine feminine ones specifically if you enjoyed this video please do like and subscribe and share your thoughts below anything else that you would like to share about this card any anything that you feel um i have something important that i have missed about this card please put it down below this concludes our video i hope that you guys enjoyed it and i hope you learned a thing or two if this is something that you are interested in again don't forget to subscribe like share with your friends tell people about this channel we are new we're a baby channel and hopefully we can continue to grow and share this beautiful knowledge and dive deeper into this knowledge with one another and i hope you have a wonderful day bye